You're never going to deal with something in a calm, rational, compassionate, loving way and be like, I really wish that I just fucking freaked out. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Relationship Theory. I'm your co-host, Tom Bilyeu, and I'm here with my lovely, beloved wife. Why do I Lisa always Billion. do that? I've got to be honest. Like, it feels so natural to do the funny wave. It doesn't look natural. Really? It feels really? so natural. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, you know, okay, yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so welcome, welcome. On to the first question. Without further ado. Let's do it. My partner and I are in a rough spot in our relationship and I would really appreciate some help, please. We've been together for two and a half years and have both been developing a growth mindset for the last year. We love each other, but I fear that we are both at a breaking point. We've been having extensive arguments that last six hours or more on and off for the last two years that start from a myriad of things and it's beginning to feel like we can seriously fight over anything. And once we start, there's no guarantee that it won't get ugly. For the last four months, I've been feeling increasingly impatient, and when we argue, I get defeatist, catastrophize very quickly, and put up an emotional shield so I stop responding to him. He has said that in this moment, he feels like I don't care and is feeling anxious about when I might suddenly switch into one of those modes and has no way of bringing me back once it happens. This isn't who I am or want to be. I'm usually very affectionate and he has said that this has made him feel that when I am affectionate, he's skeptical and it feels it's just for show. We recently had our first overnight fight and I told him I've been feeling rejected for the last three days. He mentioned breaking up and I spent hours saying that I was wrong and let's work on us. We eventually agreed that we would try to make it work and I'll be in the doghouse while I work to earn back his trust. But if I fail, we will be done. He said he will feel uncomfortable if I touch him and doesn't want to be in my presence and has left our apartment. If you would kindly offer some advice in this situation, I would be so grateful. Wow. Wow. You and I use the analogy of you can't let dust settle in a relationship because of this very reason. Because right now they're at the point where they're always just shy of redlining. So they constantly like snap over into just an all out fight. Um, and so they're really going to have to do some emotional spring cleaning. Sorry, I can nail myself, but like, that's essentially what we have to do. So the reason that we talk about not letting the dust settle is because any one speck of dust is not a problem. So any one, um, you know, they say something, it rubs you a little bit the wrong way, but ah, is it re am I really gonna make a big deal out of that? No, I'm not, I'm gonna let it slide. And then I'm gonna let the next one slide, and the next one slide, and the next one, and then all of a sudden you're freaking out over what seems like nothing, but in reality, it's been these little things that have been building, 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 and you haven't taken the time to address them. So that's where, what brought that metaphor to mind of, you know, it, you have to like constantly clean because if you've ever been in a house where, you know, people haven't dusted for years, it's like, it's horrifying. And the moment you go to clean it, it like kicks up this plume of dust. And so every time they go to talk about it now, they have to deal with that first like kick up of the plume where it's, you know, the six hours, it's overnight, it's let's break up because they're just so fucking pissed and they haven't taken the time to address the underlying issue. Now I'm going to guess that we have some, there's probably some collisions of values in here somewhere. There's something where they're arguing about the T. They're at the surface level and they're not getting all the way down to what they value in life and why these things rub them the wrong way and bother them. And they also probably don't have rules and um, what I'll call beliefs and values in the relationship because neither of them are making the other person feel like they're number one. And then they also don't have strategies. Like for instance, if she knows, okay, I tend to get pissed and once I get pissed, I stay pissed, which was my exact problem, but I worked on coming up with strategies that were based on what I was reading about the brain and understanding human behavior. And so I wrote myself the letter. We've talked about this many times. But assume people haven't heard. Yet. Right, so I wrote, so here's the big problem in an argument. The person really does sometimes something that you're justified in being angry about. And the fact that you're justified to be angry is exactly what causes the problem. Because 
you're not going to look back on it and be glad you were angry. You, you will always be glad you articulated when something upset you. You'll always be glad when you guys were able to really talk it out and be respectful and hear each other out and lower your defenses and open yourself up. Um, you're always going to be glad you did that. You're never going to deal with something in a calm, rational, compassionate, loving way and be like, I really wish that I just fucking freaked out. No one ever thinks that. <laughs> but every time you freak out, you're going to be like, uh, it's not me. All the things she's saying, like, I don't think of myself like this. I'm actually very affectionate. But you're not getting yourself to that place. And so if you've shown over and over that you're not getting yourself to that place, you need a new strategy. You need a tactic. And this is where people think that love is like some mythical thing and it's going to cure all. And if it was really love, I wouldn't have to work at it. That's total bullshit. And dealing with another human, no matter how much love you have for them, no matter how much excitement you have for them. And by the way, relationships are like shifting sands. It's like, it's always moving. What part, what moment in the relationship are we in? Is it that initial sort of hot, intense love? Or is this now maturing into something and dealing with those shifting sands of feeling differently about the person? If you're not able to put strategies and things in place to navigate that, you're going to be in trouble. So she needs a strategy. She needs some rules. She needs to identify her values and all of that going into this so that she can say, regardless of whether or not I am justified in being pissed off, who do I want to be in this moment? How do I want to act? What is going to make me proud of me? And then making sure that she has tools and techniques and bright lines, quite frankly, rules, um, going into these discussions so that they don't spiral out of control. And that's when you wrote the letter to yourself. Yeah. So thank you to bring it back to that. <laughs> um, so that was my technique was I knew who, who I wanted to be in that moment, which was somebody who was emotionally resilient, meaning I didn't just fly off the handle or get upset that I could in real time change my neurochemistry, not hold on to that I've got some right to be pissed off as if that was a fun place for me to be and recognize that I believed that you loved me. And if I believed, if I really believed that you loved me, then why not extend you the grace of saying she didn't mean to upset me. Mm. She may have, and I really may have the right to be pissed, but she didn't mean to. So why now am I going to punish her for something she didn't mean to do? And so like when I think about how, so the letter that I wrote was basically saying part of the reason that I would get upset with you is that you have motive in wanting me to calm down. So I couldn't trust your actions. So my letter was, hey, me, it's me. I have no motive to calm you down other than you've never once looked back on this and thought, I'm so glad I stayed pissed off for six hours. So since you know that, that future is very predictable, let's do things right now that will change your neurochemistry. Because the six hours is basically, you're letting the fire burn out and it won't burn forever and eventually it will dissipate and then you see with this totally different perspective. So the letter was, hey me, it's me. You know she loves you, and you know that if you force yourself to laugh out loud right now, it will change your neurochemistry so much, you'll be able to stop being angry, to open yourself up, to be vulnerable, to explain yourself in a calm way that where you want her to win. All of those feelings are going to flood back. And once you're approaching a discussion from, I want you to win, and you want me to win, which means we both want to really be understood, and we want the other person to be understood, and that... Now I'm going to confess where I have gone wrong and you're not going to use it against me and you're going to confess where you've gone wrong and I'm not going to use it against you. And both of us are looking for not where the other person went wrong, but where like, oh wow, I can actually really see that. So you and I were having a discussion not too long ago and I said, you actually have legitimate grievances. I've been really working a lot. And because I'm working a lot, you're not getting the time and attention that you need right now. And that's legitimate. And if I come at you like, fuck, this is just another thing for me to deal with. Like, give me some slack. Like, cut me a break. Give me the space I need to fucking get through this. Then you're going to put your walls up. You're going to be defensive. And we're just going to go at each other. Mm -hmm. But if we both want the other person to win, then I'm going to confess. I actually can see why you would be upset. And, but... I really do love you and I really do want you to win. So let me explain why we're here. I'm feeling overwhelmed. There's a lot of things coming at me and 
I want to get to that place where I can, you know, give you what you need. I can deliver on that. I really do want that. And then you're from your perspective doing the same thing. Like, whoa, I actually didn't think of that. I was in my own perspective. Here's my perspective. Here's why I'm feeling this. But it's like, there's a generosity of framing, yeah. I think is the easiest way to say it, where it's like, I'm going to frame where you're at in the most generous way. Like, I bet it's really hard what you're going through. And having you say that, like once the, if the other person understands, right? Not just like, I don't understand why you're freaking out or why you feel like this. What do you mean? I'm busy. I'm building a business. Like that conversation would have been completely different if that's how you had approached it. Um, but coming to like, I actually understand why you feel like that, but let me, let, let's talk about how, why and why we're here. And maybe even sometimes we may not be able to change it for a few weeks or a month based on like what our life is like, but to be able to have that discussion and have you listen and us be on that same page of like, I understand why you're feeling like this versus like, you're, why are you feeling like this? It's not as like accusatory. Um, it just allows me to go like, take a deep breath and go, yeah, you know, this is the life we chose. And right now it's a difficult time. We are very busy, but it is needed. And as long as he kind of gets that it is difficult for me, like there's that appreciation behind it that then allows you to go, okay, like I, we can't keep going down this path, but it may take us two or three weeks because of things that we've got going on. And versus if we'd come at it a very different way, you're saying, why are you feeling like that? What are you talking about? My defenses would have gone up immediately. And then I think I would have then been, I wouldn't have been as flexible. I've been like, okay, but no, things have to change. Like I can kind of know how I would work. Right. But the fact that you approached it like that allowed us to say, okay, well, let's just put together a three week or a month plan on how we're going to evolve into this next stage. Um, yeah, and if these guys are going to have any hope of getting past it, one, they've got to really want to, and I think they have to be really honest with themselves about, is this the relationship that's worth fighting for? And I think it was, um, oh man, why am I blanking on his name? Michael Gervais. Michael Gervais, he and his wife went through, early in their relationship, mm -hmm. um, he and his wife went through this moment where they, they were about to get divorced. And the therapist asked his wife, is this the relationship you want to fight for? Because some relationship at some point, you're, you're going to have to fight and Work do all the things it. right. And so is this the one? Right. And that's when she was like, yeah, this is the one. And so then they, they process through it. It wasn't, she didn't have to say like, oh, we're not in a dark place. It was just, do you want to work for it or not? And that's what they have to ask themselves okay. because it isn't going to be easy. They've got to know this is, this is the one I want to fight for. And if it is, then okay, cool. I'll walk through a couple things that they can do. But if it's not, then it's time to be honest about that and not waste time because it, they're in this weird dark place now where it sounds like it's starting to damage them both. It's damaging her sense of who she is because she can't stop herself from fighting all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's damaging his sense of like safety and security because he doesn't trust her motives. He thinks that she's just putting on a front of affection. He's worried that she's gonna like click over. And it's like, if she knows that really is true because some part of her knows this is not the person I wanna be with, then they've gotta own that. Mm -hmm and for each other's sake and you know it's never easy but far better to move on and begin to heal than to just stay in dysfunction mm -hmm. okay assuming that they decide that this is the relationship that they want to fight for one of the biggest things they're going to have to be able to do is truly let go and this is something that i think a lot of people can't do so when you start doing the spring cleaning and it kicks up all this dust and you're you're really talking about it, you're really addressing it. And so it's like, you're raw, you're vulnerable, you're reliving some of the like hurts and frustrations and all that. And you have to bring them up and process through them. In that moment, if you don't let it go, the dust just comes right back down. So you like stirred it up, but it, it just lays back down. It's not actually being removed. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of people, they can't let go. Like they so feel a sense of justice that this person has wronged me. And unless they atone for their wronging, unless they are punished in some way for what they have done, I can never move forward. Let me tell you, that's not gonna work. So if your significant other needs to be punished in some way, and this is like where infidelity gets so tricky because you, you immediately break up unless you can actually let it go. 
And I heard this story and, and it was like meant as a joke, but it was so heartbreaking to me. And they were saying, um, my grandmother has Alzheimer's, but she still goes after my grandfather for the time that he cheated on her 60 years ago. And they're like, she has no memory, but she remembers that. Ooh. Like, fuck, what, like really think about that for a second. The, the person is losing their sense of identity. They don't remember their loved ones or who they are, but they know how much they're upset about this betrayal because they've gone over it and over it and over it so many times, holding on to the sense of injustice and not being able to let it go, that it is so hardwired that even though plaque is building up in their fucking brain and that if you put them in an fMRI scanner, it would be nothing but literal holes of function. Yeah. But they've placed that betrayal in so many different places that it's still fucking there as the brain erodes from the inside. So many people live there, they mm -hmm. just can't let shit go. Mm -hmm. That is heartbreaking for me for that person, yeah. not for anybody else. Yeah. So number one, for them to move forward, they both have to be able to forgive and actually just let it entirely and go. I think if you can't, like be honest with yourself, like don't be your up, yourself up about the fact that you can't let go of it. But if you can't, then I think that you would need to break up because if you truly can't, you're only, it's, you're only gonna hold on to it and it will come out, even if you don't mean to, right? It will come out in the little things you do. Sometimes it'll be like a snide comment when you're just tired or sometimes they'll let you down and you'll start to think about it. So for their own sake, if you can't genuinely move on, then break up. And I remember when, and I've told this story before, but when the the worst, probably one of the worst times of my life, um, I, I said to you, I turned around to you and I was like, I need you and you were traveling and you were going through something really tough as well. And it was like, I think probably the worst time of both of our lives. And you were about to travel and I was like, I need you to stay and I never ask you ever, right? Have I? ever asked you to no, that's the on one trip. time this happened yeah. that's the one time i ever asked and i used the word important which is our code word so we have a code word that means you have to drop everything and that was our code word and mm. we used the code word and everything and you just looked at me and you said but it's important for me to go and this is fundamental to who i am as a human being and so now we're at a place where we both said the word important we both kind of need a uh, needing something in that situation and I remember you saying that to me and you know obviously I was very upset and I just remember thinking this is one of those moments Lisa that you have to let go of because you can never hold it over his head that he didn't stay and you need to understand why he didn't and then being able to un, un, um, peel, peel it and see that okay I was actually it wasn't about asking you to stay for me it was about asking you to do something that wasn't um, fundamental to what you pride yourself on and that as a wife I couldn't ask you to do that so that was easy not easy but that allowed me to go okay I get why you have to go mm. I'm still upset and I have to be able to tell you that I'm upset and that right now it still stings but I also understand I can never hold this against you ever in my life and I never did like it doesn't even in repeating the story I don't have the emotion of the hurt that I did when it first happened right but um, I don't think I give you enough credit for that like you really haven't a held it against me, and b like you self soothed. I didn't talk you through that. No, you like, didn't. Yeah. I told you. And I think that was actually important though, because if you self, if you talked me through it, I think I'd be holding to your words instead of really of coming to the conclusion by myself. Yeah. Yeah, that actually just hit totally. me. It's true. Doing the work myself and figuring out how to navigate, I think actually helped set mm. us up for success because now it's not just well he said right. it's like no lisa you know in your gut and in your heart that if you had asked him to stay and you put your quote unquote foot down it's like asking you to be somebody that isn't you and yeah. how would i feel if you had asked that of me and if you had said even though you know this isn't who you are and this actually goes against your identity i still want you to do it i think that that would be hard for me to be like well, okay he doesn't actually then understand me right. because asking someone to do that I think is um, yeah not understanding I mean and there's lots of tactics and tools that we've um, mentioned in the past that we can also keep talking about but um, the writing your le the letter to yourself oh in fact for the people who are watching for the first time hearing that story um, I read that 
that letter to you once. And you said to me, um, this is the letter. I need you to read it to me when this happens again. And I remember I read it to you once and that was all it took. Mm. Um, same with, we've got like these little coins um, that say love on them. Because sometimes it really is hard to break that emotional pattern. That was such a good idea, but having them on you. If there was a way though, I really did think that was a rad thing. Yeah. If you want to finish yeah. explaining. Yeah, so there were, there were these little like stones or coins or whatever, and they had love engraved on, um, in them. And um, what I did is I gave one to you and then one to me. And I said, all right, in those moments where we're arguing and we both know that like, hey, we love each other, but we can't say the words. Like we can't say like, all right, let's like stop arguing. Like, cause you're in that moment and right. the energy's there, but you know it, but you can't say it. You just pick up the coin and give it to the other person. You don't have to say anything. All it takes is that action. And in that action, we defined what that would mean. Okay, that means I love you. Right now, we're going through something emotional, but we know that we love each other and let's remind each other of that. And so the coin, yeah, I actually really liked it. You're right, is that how you carry it around with you everywhere, especially right. you guys don't have handbags. Um, <laughs> but, but it was a good strategy even just have around the house. It's a great strategy and it comes down to people's ability to make something sacred. Because what those love um, stones, I guess, were they relied on was that I knew if I gave it to you, you would instantly stop being mad no matter what. And if you gave it to me, I would instantly stop being mad. But if you give it to the person and they throw it and they're like, <laughs> I can't believe you're trying to like give that to me now when you've done X, Y, Z. It's like the whole point of the love token was to remind the other person that you love them, that they believe to the core of their being that you love them. And it, it was just another way to like Break state shift. Noise. Yeah, to like break out of where you are, like at a neurochemical mm -hmm. level and get into a new headspace. And we used a couple different things like that. Oh, another thing we did is the hands up. It's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. So um, we basically understand. Baby. Yeah, so <laughs> smiling when you're mad obviously is very difficult to do, mm. but forcing yourself to smile does something to the chemicals. Right. So we said one of us, whoever's in the least annoyed um, mind space, to be the one to like, basically when you turn around and you see the other person, now imagine you're mad. Mad as hell. You're mad as hell. And you walk into the room and I'm still mad at him and I go, baby! It's hard to do to it's force hard to yourself. Do. And it's super vulnerable because if the other person's like, Knock it the fuck off. Yeah, yeah. So you have to reciprocate. You must make right. that deal beforehand. But it's really worked for us mm. where I'll be pissed, we'll be in the middle of an argument and you'll walk in and you put your hands straight up in the air, you do the high pitch and you call me baby. And then I reciprocate, baby. It just shifts, yeah, like you said. Instantly. It breaks that conversation. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't address it. You have to address what you are arguing about. 100% like going back to You don't have to address it necessarily right that right second. Exactly, right. But, but you have to address yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because going back to what you said earlier, you can't let the dust settle. But as but the first step is breaking that emotional tension right. and that stress between the two of you and we found that doing that has really helped. So little things like that. Massively. Yeah.